first question you know, will be Justin Spears. I, I, I'd like to just start off. Uh, obviously, I know we're going to talk about the game, and I, th I was really proud of our team uh, and our performance tonight, you know, going home for Christmas or not going home for Christmas and handling COVID and the end of a semester. You know, I, I thought our coaching staff, our managers, uh, you know, guys that didn't play in the game, guys that didn't start in the game, and it really our starters, we were really fully engaged and really a, attentive to detail and ready to play this game. You know, if we don't win the game, um, I have no problem with our team's effort and approach. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really proud of our, of our group uh, doing what we did and playing and beating a very, very good Colorado team and experienced group there. Um, the other thing is just me starting out. I just wanted to welcome Jed Fish to Tucson and, uh, you know, his family. And I know he's hard at it, hiring a coaching staff. Uh, really look forward to meeting him. You know, thrilled that he's here and, uh, you know, anxious to, to help him in any way that we can or I can as a program, you know, get Arizona football up and running. Uh, I'm excited about uh, him being our coach. So just wanted to start off by welcoming uh, him and his family to Tucson. Uh, I remember that same flight 12 years ago, and uh, I know there's a lot going on, but we wish him well and wish him uh, a happy new year. All right, we'll start with questions. Justin Spears, Arizona Daily Star. Coach, uh, when you look at the entire 40 minutes of that game, is it safe to say that was probably the best game you guys have played this year? You know, I, I, I think so, uh, Justin. Um, you know, we, we certainly, we had an energy about us on offense. You know, we executed, uh, we made shots. Uh, that's always a part of it. But, you know, when you play a game in the Pac-12 with eight turnovers, you know, I think any coach in our conference would take that. That's a great stat. Uh, we also got to the foul line 27 times, and, you know, we converted 20 of the 27. Uh, having said that, you know, the percentages were also good. You know, we won tonight because of our offense. Uh, we were clicking, we were efficient, and we got contributions from a lot of players. You know, I like to credit Terrell Brown's seven assists and no turnovers. I would say on the season right now, he's like 30 assists to three turnovers, which is amazing. And James Akinjo with eight assists, and two turnovers. Jamal Baker, three assists, one turnover. You know, you add that up, that's 18 assists and, uh, and three turnovers between our guards. So I thought those guys were all in their own right terrific tonight. And uh, Jamal kind of had a similar streak to Terrell last year with, uh, you know, the assist to turnovers. Are you seeing anything, any similarities with Terrell this year? And, um, you know, over the last six games, he hasn't had a turnover. I'm just wondering what you're seeing out of him that's allowing him to take care of the ball. Well, you know, one of the reasons that we were so excited to add Terrell is, you know, at Seattle, you know, he was involved with, you know, a statistic of, more assists per field goal made maybe almost than any player that played the game last year. I mean, uh, Seattle is an excellent team of not turning the ball over and he had the ball in his hands almost, you know, a lot. So, you know, putting him out there with, with, uh, with James, you know, allowing him to be in there when James is, is out of the game. And then, you know, at times having uh, Jamal James and him in together, you know, you have a really agile ball handling group and, uh, you know, they take care of it and they make good decisions. And I think they make their teammates better, but they also have a way of making each other better too. Next question will be Troy Hutchison, All Sports Tucson. When you talk about uh, Christian Coloco's energy today, it seemed like he came out with a lot more aggression four dunks today, 10 points, five, uh, eight rebounds, excuse me. It just seemed like he was playing at a different pace. Yeah, you know, I credit Christian, you know, against Montana, uh, he didn't have a good night. You know, we talked about it. He became frustrated in that game because, you know, Christian is an incredibly hard worker. He's one of our best practice players. He was last year. He doesn't miss days. Uh, he, he doesn't take segments off. He works. And, you know, you want your hard work to translate to games. But, you know, as oftentimes is the case, you need game experience to really settle in and, and gain confidence. Confidence is big for Christian. But his mental approach, uh, 
he came back, had two really good days of practice, um, maybe took a break here over the holidays that was much needed. But he had his best game of the season tonight against a very good front line. Bruce Pasco, Arizona Daily Star. Yeah, Sean, I mean, just kind of a big picture thought. I mean, you guys have always handled Colorado here. You had that years ago, you had that one that went into overtime, but always took care of them. They had a lot of veteran players this year. You didn't have any fans. I mean, did, did, did this game kind of worry you? And, and does it feel like a, a pretty big accomplishment because of that? Yeah, though, no, this game worries me. I mean, you know, I think in a Pac-12 right now, uh, you should be worried about every game. I mean, we have a terrific conference. Uh, a lot of returning players from a year ago, a lot of teams that are hungry to have great Januaries and Februaries now that the holiday season is over. And Colorado is one of those teams. Uh, I believe they're a postseason team. You know, they have a, a great point guard in McKinley Wright. You know, McKinley's been a good player for Colorado from day one. He was an excellent freshman. He was an excellent sophomore and junior. And he finds himself now maybe playing his best basketball his career as a senior and you know on their team they really shoot the ball they're a skilled group uh, they have size uh, they play defense they play offense and I, I think they have an excellent team so when you beat an excellent team you feel good about what you accomplished having said that uh, we're about ready to go on the road this is now the second experience you know hopefully the first experience will help us and uh, we're going to have to be ready for uh, Washington, I know they've had some time off. Uh, their zone's uh, very unique, and uh, we have to be ready to uh, to play a great game in Seattle. I also want to ask you, uh, my Zoom crashed when I was trying to ask James for a follow-up, but I, he said he messed up when you had the, you practiced kind of that, that buzzer-beating transition three. He said he messed it up, but you gave him the go-ahead to try it anyway in, this, in the game. And what, what did he mess up? And I mean, like, what was the, the difference and, and and was this something you guys have kind of thought about in 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 uh, limited second situations you you go to him on on a play like that you mean at the end of the half yeah i'm sorry at the end of the first half yeah yeah, yeah. no you know what we've what we've been working on here you know end of the game is you know a lot of times players especially guards they don't have a great feel for what six seconds means or what four seconds means and you know really a second represents a dribble so, you know, in the end of the half or end of the game situation, you know, you have in that internal clock of, okay, there's four seconds, I got four dribbles. Here's 6.3 seconds, I got six dribbles. Because, uh, you know, what you don't want is a guy to stop short and shoot a 25-foot shot when he had one more or two more dribbles to get closer. So um, it was just ironic that, you know, he took like that extra dribble maybe even an extra two dribbles to get the ball all the way to the three-point line and, you know, take that shot. But James played a terrific game tonight. There's no denying it. Uh, he was at times the best player on the court. I love the fact he had eight assists and two turnovers. We believe in him. Uh, he believes in himself. And he really did a great job of making his teammates better. Uh, you could tell Jamal and him are finding a nice chemistry between the two of them. And that's what uh, two good guards – experienced guards who are playing the right way. That's, that's how it feels. Uh, I also thought Jamal was very good tonight. One of the things that I liked that he did is he got to the foul line seven times. You know, he's such a good shooter that teams are going to try to chase him off the three point line. And as you can see, you know, he's more adept at dribbling the ball and getting to the basket more than you realize. And uh, he had some great drives tonight, which ended up in free throw attempts. So I like that about his game. Next, we'll go Steve Rivera. Sean, there was a lot to like about the game tonight. Everything went really well. I thought the transition defense was really good, too. Something that uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but last night or tonight was very good. Yeah, when you play Colorado, that's a big point because they shoot the ball so well. And a lot of, you know, great opportunities are found in transition. But really, McKinley Wright, when he's coming at you with a head of steam, you know, when he's able to really go coast to coast and really push that ball, not a lot of good things happen for uh, for the other team. So, you know, we tried to emphasize it like we always do. We work on it. And uh, tonight, you know, I'll know more when I watch the game again. But for the most part, I thought we got back 
to your point. But, you know, here's the thing about transition defense. When you play good offense, you're efficient, and you have eight turnovers, that's the number one thing that helps transition defense. When you're turning it over 13 or 14 times, you have empty possessions or you're not executing, sometimes you could be really good in transition defense, but there's no answer for two-on-ones, three-on-twos, you know, broken plays. So part of why we were able to get our defense set is we were a really efficient, good offensive team tonight. And same for the offense. I mean, transition the offense, you were able to get some turnovers and then push the ball, making it nice, nice pace. Yep. And we made good decisions. Uh, again, didn't really have those head scratching turnovers. Right. We've talked a lot about trying to cut that number down. And uh, tonight we, we really, we did that. So I'm hoping it's a sign of things to come. You know, one thing about it, you play against different styles, play on the road, play at home. You know, you don't want that to be coming and going. You know, some games you take care of it, other games you don't. You want that to be the constant where you value the ball, you take care of the ball. And, you know, especially with Terrell Brown and James and Jamal, those are three players that, that know how to take care of the ball. And tonight you really saw that. Thanks. Troy Hutchison, back to you, Troy. Coming into tonight's game, McKinley Wright was averaging 16.3 points a game. You guys held him to 10 points tonight on 3 of 12 shooting. Uh, what did James do to cause some trouble for McKinley there? Well, I mean, James gave great effort, but, you know, defense is always a team item. You know, it's, you know, we switch in ball screens. You know, there's help and recover. You know, there's a lot of different things going on with defense. You know, you have to give the credit to the team. However, the guy that's matched up individually, you know, they have to, they have to be on it. They have to great, give great effort, concentration. Um, and, you know, it wasn't just James, but I thought the guys that guarded McKinley worked hard because we know how important he is to Colorado. He's a very, very good player. You know, played against Oscar De Silva. I think he's one of college basketball's best forwards. Not Pac-12's best forwards but one of college basketball's best overall players at that position. And tonight we play our second game. I would say the same thing from Kinley Wright. He's one of college basketball's uh, best point guards. And, you know, tonight James Akinjo was terrific on our end. Bruce Pasco, back to Bruce. Yeah, Sean, you, you mentioned uh, as far as Terrell and the, the system he played at in Seattle, maybe helping him a little bit develop as a, as a ball handler. I mean, I, I was just curious. I mean, like you said, 10 to one ratio at this point, did that, does that even surprise you? And, and uh, is there anything else about his game that that's kind of, you know, developed that way and, you know, maybe, and, and also bring coming off the bench. I wondered if that's a, a good or a bad thing for a, for a, a guy to kind of watch things develop and then go in and, and, and uh, still not making mistakes. Well, you know, Terrell's an unselfish person. He's uh, an experienced kid. Great student off the court, man. He's, he's one of the nicest kids that we've had here. Uh, you know, he came here to embrace a role, and he's playing that role well. You know, we're on him to rebound better on defense. You know, we're on him to be detailed and learn our system on defense. But, you know, you, again, no matter how experienced you are, this is the first time that he's ever played for us. Then it takes some time. And I feel like every game that he's playing, he's getting more comfortable, getting used to playing for a new coach, new style. But uh, he really plays his role well. And uh, and I think that, you know, when you give him a challenge and you, you point out things that we want him to do better, uh, he really tries hard to do those things. But I don't think he cares whether he starts or doesn't. You know, I think he's one of those players that's really here to win. And uh, you really feel that with the style that he plays. And finally, just any, uh, you know, you mentioned Washington coming right up on you and the road trip. Uh, how do you handle that with the unusually short turnaround uh, just a couple days here? Do you, do you change anything routine-wise uh, or your schedule? No, we just have to be careful. Uh, you know, our guys don't have school right now, but we have to be careful just in, you know, how long we're going, how hard we go. I mean, there's different ways to prepare for games. You know, the next two days uh, – you know, we have to be careful physically with our team and uh, be smart as a staff, be smart as a team. And guess what? Be the most ready we can be on Thursday. This year, I don't mind playing the game that we just played in a given in a, in a Pac-12 road trip week. 
sometimes you like the third game is too much, but because we've only been able to play seven, you know, I think playing games is helpful and uh, we've had enough practices. We're at about 50 practices. You know, part of what's going to develop our team is games. And uh, tonight, I think playing tonight's game, it helps our confidence and in some ways maybe prepares us better for the upcoming trip. And on this trip, when you have a guy like Terrell going back to Seattle, uh, obviously people aren't hanging. You don't want guys hanging out with everybody, but do they, do they see, do you, are, are they allowed to see family at all? Or how does that work when you have to deal with the protocols you got? No, I mean, it, you're not really allowed to do that. Right. So uh, it's hard. It's hard on Terrell. It's hard on, uh, on all of us, on everybody. We're no different than you guys. Uh, and we're trying to follow the rules as best that we can. So, you know, I think the families of our players really understand that. And they're, they've been very, very supportive. And, uh, but we're, we're going up there to stick together as a group, prepare for a game, uh, and just try to enjoy the holidays as best we can. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody.